again, sculpting the bones and hands, it's not about being a great sculpture, but it, it's more about figuring out what is there underneath the skin uh, when we go to palpate. So in doing this, um, looking at the upper limb, as you can see, I've, scap I've sculpted the um, posterior view of the scapula, the clavicle, um, the humerus, down to the uh, radius and ulna. And now I'm working on the, the palm of the hand. So I'm flipping back and forth between pages. Uh, 401 has a posterior view of the hand um, connected with the arm. And I'm also looking at um, page 403 as well, looking at the actual bones and what they look like. So right now I'm attempting to sculpt the hamate. I'm looking at the round curve and the fact that it's somewhat triangular um, and there's a slight ridge on it. And that's going to go um, closest to my fingers and underneath that part that's closest to the, um, I have to flip back again, um, the radius of the bone is the praequitrium. So we're going to sculpt that as well. You may need to switch your book around uh, to give you a better visual. So let's see here. The triquitrium again is triangular in shape. And it actually fits in. to the ulnar. So I'm just grabbing some more clay, or not ulnar, I'm sorry, radius. And again, it's just kind of getting an idea and a feel for what, what does this really look like? Um, you know, how, how do these bones come together so that we're able to function the way we function? Again, don't be concerned about being perfect. Um, as you can tell, I by no means am perfect. Um, and you may find that it's easier to pull the bones away and just do the hand portion uh, due to the fact that the pictures don't uh, align with possibly what you've already done. Um, again, it's a depending on your ability to understand spatial awareness um, will determine your ability to do this as well. So, so that's my cap hatchuate. Trapezium. Scaphoid. And my lunate's going to be in between my scaphoid and my tracutium. The lunate is actually a really interesting bone because it tends to move um, and that can actually fall down into the carpal tunnel um, causing um, nerve entrapment. So there's basically my carpal bones of my wrist and then I can go into after that and forming my um, metacarpal.
again, if you look at the thumb compared to the trapezium, there's a little bit of a whole divot, and the thumb piece is going to go into that to make that saddle joint um, that the thumb is known for. And then again, if you look, I'm looking at how the thumb is when it comes to the next joint and how that joint is formed. Again, this is important when we start looking at how tendons are attached and where they're attached and how those can be injured with certain activities, such as basketball, where tendonitis might occur. Okay. So I think that kind of gives you an idea. That's just the thumb itself. So one, two, three. Make sure we have enough. So there's your metacarpal and then your phalanges. So we want to make sure that we have enough of our phalanges. All right.